Well, upsampling is the process of increasing the sampling rate. Of course, the signal has already been sampled, so it's in discrete time, and we're going to take those samples and we're going to do a discrete time interpolation to construct a discrete time signal that would correspond to a higher sampling rate. So in this case, we're going to start on the left where we have the lower sampling rate. And note, again, in this case, we're showing that the sampling rate is exactly twice the bandwidth of the signal. Of course, in a practical system, you'd want a little bit of space in here to allow for filter transition bands and so on. But this is uh, nice for purposes of illustration. So we're going to start at a low sampling rate and we're going to process the signal in a way to convert it to a higher sampling rate, which amounts to interpolating. So that will give us, the in the, in the frequency domain, we want to go from the discrete time Fourier transform on the left, and after we do our upsampling, we should end up with the discrete time Fourier transform on the right, x tilde of e to the j omega. Now the way we do this is that we take our signal x of n at the lower sampling rate, we insert m minus 1 zeros between each sample, and that gives us a new signal x z of n, and then we'll pass that through a low pass filter, h sub i, to obtain our upsampled signal x tilde of n. So we start with sampling frequency omega s, we end with sampling frequency m times omega s. We can illustrate this process. Here I've sketched a sample signal, x of n, and I've shown after we insert zeros for the case m equals 3, we would be inserting two zeros in between each sample of x of n. So now our signal goes 1, 0, 0, 0.7, 0, 0, 0.5, 0, 0, negative 0.4, 0, 0, and so on. And then when we low pass filter this signal, it's going to smooth it out. And so we're going to end up with something that looks like this signal here. So that's conceptually what's happening. And we've interpolated or filled in the values in between the original samples over on the right in x tilde. Now to understand and see how this works and verify that it works in the frequency domain, we're going to need to have an expression for x z of n. And we can write that x z of n is equal to x of n divided by m, where when n over m is an integer, and it's 0 otherwise. So x z of 3 is going to be x of, in this case if m is 3, of 3 divided by 3, or x of 1. Just as we saw here, this is x of 1. And then the zeros in between. Now another way to write this that's a little less obvious but makes use of the properties of the impulse function is to write x z of n as the sum k equals minus infinity infinity x of k delta of n minus k m. So the delta function only exists or is non-zero when n is equal to k m. Everywhere else this is zero so all those values in between are zero and of course it picks out the uh, proper value of x to put in there. Now with this expression we can find the discrete time Fourier transform of x z of n in terms of x of n and that's the key to seeing how this works. So I've written that derivation out down here and we're going to start just from the definition of the discrete time Fourier transform which is the sum n equals minus infinity to infinity x z of n which I've replaced by our expression for x z of n in terms of x, that's inside the parentheses here, times e to the minus j omega n. So this is just the definition of the discrete time Fourier transform of x z of n. Now we can interchange the order of the summations and pull x k out of the side of the summation involving n to obtain the, this expression here. We've got a sum over k, x of k, and then inside we've got the sum over n delta of n minus km times e to the minus j omega n. Now the important thing to note here is that this impulse picks out values when n is equal to km. So this is going to give us, we add these up, we're going to get e to the minus j omega m times k. And if I put that 
then into the expression, we end up just with the discrete time Fourier transform, except we've got omega here. Instead of omega, we could think of this as omega prime, but it's really omega times m. So this is just the discrete time Fourier transform of the original signal evaluated at omega times m. And that's a scaling of the frequency axis. So we can sketch this to verify that indeed it works. And I'm going to start with my original signal sampled at the lower sampling rate. And that's sketched out up here. Then when we scale the axis by m, instead of these being um, relatively spread out, they become compressed, they get closer together. And now what was at 2 pi shows up at 2 pi over m. What was at 4 pi shows up at 4 pi over m and so on. And remember that this x is a periodic signal. It's always 2 pi periodic, the DTFT is. And consequently, so xz looks like this, we've shown here. Now we're going to filter that. And the question is, what kind of a filter do we need to get x tilde of e to the j omega? Well, it turns out that x tilde of e to the j omega just has the one replicate between minus pi over m and pi over m. And then it's empty all the way out to 2 pi, where the DTFT repeats again. And the amplitude of x tilde should be m over t because the sampling frequency is now t over m. We've increased the sampling frequency by decreasing the interval between samples. So the low pass filter that we need, hi, has to have a gain of m and it should have a pass band between minus pi over m and pi over m. And if we apply this to our zero stuffed signal, we get the correct discrete time for a transform at the higher sampling rate. Okay, so we can effectively, by putting in zeros and then low pass filtering, we can effectively change the sampling rate. Again, this example has the original signal spectrum just on the edge of aliasing. And in a practical scenario, we're going to have to give ourselves a little bit of space in here so that there's a little gap in here for the pass band to stop band transition of the low pass filter because we won't be able to build this kind of perfect brick wall filter. But conceptually, this is how it works. And in practice, by giving oneself a little bit of headroom where the sampling frequency exceeds the Nyquist rate, we can make this work out quite well 